for the audience. What's the most important sexual organ, man or woman? Brain. Go for it, guys. Who said it first? Brain. What? Brain. Yes. Clearly, clearly, guys, both men and women, I used to think it was the penis, but uh, I, would, I am dead wrong, as we will see. Now, looking at some of these cases here, uh, in my practice, as well as uh, I'm seeing more and more of this, and no doubt this is a serious issue. First case, young man, you got to assume that e everything is clean. Healthy, 28-year-old guy, everything negative. Unexplained directions. I want to have relationships with my wife or my uh, significant partner, and I'm unable. Case two, unable to orgasm in the vagina. Case three, low libido. Case four, se severely delayed ejaculation. Case five, unusual sexual preferences, uh, vastly different from the baseline. So anyone got any idea, what's, what's, what's the problem here? Anyone have any idea what's the issue going on with some of these cases? What's the common thing? Anyone know who that is? Dr. Oz, right? Even Dr. Oz is starting to talk about porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And uh, this was in 2013. Time Magazine even knows about it. Now, what about the incidents? This is amazing. Three out of ten men between 18 and 25 years of age are complaining of erectile dysfunction. Now, hear me again. 18 to 25 year olds, 3 out of 10 are complaining of some sort of ED. 25% of newly diagnosed ED are in young men under, the four, under 40 years old. Compare that to Kinsley's report in 1948. Erectile dysfunction in the young men was unheard of. Men under 19, less than 1%. Men under 45, 3%. The Japan Times, look at that. Four, almost 4 out of 10 men between 16 and 19, no interest in sex. That's double from the year 2008. What were some of these statements? Too much of a bother. Prefer anime, you know the Japanese cartoons? Uh, over 40% of those people within the survey have not had sex in a month. How about the, the, how about the people in Paris, the most romantic city in the world? A, a survey in 2008 shows 20%, about 21 in every five men, have no interest in sex. Again, we already said this is prime time. Dr. Oz. Now, interestingly enough, you can go online and type go to these forums. There are several forums out there with men complaining of this problem, young men in particular. And I've read several of these forums. And they say, I went two hours. I went two hours to a, the best urologist in the area. And he had nothing for me. He just gave me some Viagra. He just gave me some Cialis. He's an idiot. That's what they're saying about us. I've said it multiple times. My urologist didn't know anything. It's unacceptable that we don't, are not aware of this as a very potent potential cause, of, or uh, not a potential, a contributing cause of erectile dysfunction. We have to wake up. Now, it's not just... You know, many famous doctors are speaking out, although we probably haven't heard it. Dr. Deutsch is a psychiatrist, and he was one of the earliest docs. He was one of the earliest docs to associate uh, porn and erectile dysfunction. He was a psychiatrist, not a urologist. Dr. Morgenthau, he's in Boston, very famous urologist. It's clearly said, he quotes, hard to know how many but it is clear that PIED, porn induced erectile dysfunction, is a new phenomenon and it is not rare. Dr. Forrest is an uh, Italian urologist, quote, internet porn is killing young men's sexual performance. Dr. Fish, he's in Cornell. When I say that porn is killing America's sexual behavior, I am not kidding, nor am I exaggerating. So what's going on? What's going on? Pornography, as the brain scientists tell us, is a super normal stimulus. It's a supra normal stimulus. The way that we were created or the way we have evolved, sexual arousal in the natural way used to be a man and a woman. Or pretty much that was the main way. However, what has been basically happened is this uh, sexual arousal 
has been put on steroids or has been dressed up in porn. So basically, we get this really incredible stimulus. We'll talk about the brain science in a minute. So why porn now? Porn's been around a long time. Why now? Well, six A's as I call it. Affordable, anonymous, don't have to go to a peep show, uh, you don't you get caught at the local bookstore or movie store. It's a very aggressive. Many people know when you type on an internet site like popular or websites, if you misspell it, you go to a porn site. And then you try to, to you know, click it out, and then another porn so site pops up. That's called mouse trapping. Very aggressive. They're also targeting kids because they know if they can hook them, they got a customer for life. Acceptable, addictive, and accessible. How accessible is it? The picture says, this picture says all. Even animals got access to it. So again, play, uh, pornography's been around a, a long time. Started, oops, sorry. Started with, you know, cave drawings. Then we advanced to like magazines. It's all still, still pictures. Then we really got advanced and we started having moving pictures such as movies with the VHS. We evolved into high speed internet, mobile devices, and yes, virtual reality. And yes, tactile suits that basically uh, you strap on your goggles, you put on your tactile suit, and basically you know no need of a, of a real human person. It's a tragedy. Now, porn and its availability, you can see young men teens to 30s and 30 year old, it's their first sexual experience. Most men now, their first experience is with internet porn. Again, this unprecedented access. We are a society that wants instant pleasure without work. You know, we, we, we don't have to woo the ladies anymore. We, we don't need to have a job. We don't know, we don't want any of that. We just want instant uh, gratification. Again, a lot of variety. We'll talk more about that later, taxi their libido. And some of these things that are happening too is expending, expending much energy and anxiety, we'll get into that later. So let's take a look at some of these statistics. Huffington Post 2013, more visits to porn site than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. 25% of all searches, 25% of all searches on the web are porn related, pornography related. That translates into almost 70 million searches a day on Google, or Firefox, or your favorite uh, search engine. Also, there are about 25 million websites, and increasing, uh, increasing daily. Study at the University of Montreal, they uh, wanted to do a study, and in this study they wanted to uh, see how porn affects the sexuality of men. So they wanted to have a group where Men who engaged in porn and men who didn't engage in porn. What do you think the results of the study were? Anyone? Five seconds, you got a book if you know the end result. No one Anybody? In the no porn room. What? There was no one in the no porn room. Roger. They could not recruit a single man that does not watch, has not watched pornography. Good job. The study wasn't conducted. True or false? One, uh, this only really affects, really porn only affects men. You think one out of three women view porn? True or false? True. true. Oh, so I'm just, I was just about to offer a prize. You're too soon. You're too fast. Yes, it's actually true. Believe it or not, you know, one third, the newest statistics are saying one third is increasing. And it's increasing. So again, treating this as a difficult matter. Right? We have, there's a lot of shame and guilt associated with this, layered with re uh, religious beliefs and complexities such as, such as these type of issues, make it a difficult conversation for, the, uh, for treatment and identification. Another big problem is women, when they discover that their, their significant other or husband is engaging in pornography, they start to feel quite inadequate, like they're not doing their job. And in reality, this is not, this is far from the truth, as we shall see. Men feel confused. They don't know, they try to stop or don't want to do it, but they find out that once they've been doing it a while, they're stuck. 